Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Tom. And this is the park bench. It is. Still in the cold with the sun setting, but we, we are actually in a park and it's light. And today we have a review video. Yeah, well. <laughs> because we bought another thing and it's quite fun. So and we want to show you it and he's had more of a go with it than I have because it's his. The Zero G flight, you might have noticed, had a very fancy stabilised camera shot against the horizon. And that was not an Osmo or a gimbal stabilised camera, it was this. A, uh, a GoPro Fusion, which I will now uh, proceed to get a close-up camera shot of. Should have prepped that, really. There yeah. We go. Uh, which I looks... My little booty in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know well, where that came Matt's from. shoe there. Matt's, Matt's shoe. <laughs> the, uh, the GoPro Fusion uh, is a 360-degree camera, and uh, it is, I think, the best 360 camera on the market. Um... I bought two of them to go to France with for the Zero-G flight uh, with the intention that one was going in the cockpit, one was going in the back, and they would be stabilised in post to the horizon. Yeah. Because the big selling point of this is it is essentially like having a, te a, a GoPro in 1080 wide in every single direction at once. So you don't need to frame the shot, you just go, cool, close enough, it'll do. It, it's... Um... I'm, I was really interested in these. I, overall, 360 video, I'm not a fan because it's Sorry. a faff to watch. The reason I'm very interested in this is it's designed to be used as a um, for post-production so you can pick a camera shot later and um, export in normal 16 by 9 video, not in 360. And GoPro are going to provide the tools to do that really easily for you, allegedly, huh. with an app that isn't out yet. Yes. I, I have mixed reviews of this. Okay. So I'll talk you through what happened. First of all, uh, I bought two of them. One of them didn't work. Oh. Um, GoPros... Uh, so I bought them on the Monday before the flight, which is just after they were released. GoPros site said in stock, next day delivery. They arrived on the Friday. They didn't even get shipped till the Thursday. Uh, it was touch and go as to whether they were going to arrive at all. That wasn't a great start. <laughs> so, do you remember when we went out? So we t went and tested them. Uh, we went and got yeah. some test footage. And if you we'll... saw our Twitters, then you'll have seen the video on the... Yeah, you've... I'll, I'll put bits of the test footage in, in throughout. It looks great. But do you remember me going, oh, that's weird, I haven't charged the battery up on this one. Yeah. I had. Uh. That GoPro had a weird thing where you turned it on once and it worked fine. And then when you turned it off, the CPU went into 100%, it would just overheat and it just wouldn't turn on again. You had every time you turned off, you had to pull the battery, put the battery back in to make it work. Okay. Which obviously, uh, like, fine if I'm using that here. It, I cannot put a bit of equipment that is overheating and misbehaving <laughs> on board an experimental zero G flight. <laughs> that has not been checked out. Um, so several phone, like, it took a couple of phone calls to GoPro. Fair play to them; they've agreed to take it back for a refund. Okay. So there's that. Uh, so on the hardware on the one that worked. I mean, I can't fault it. You've seen the pictures. Mm. Um, it works exactly as advertised. The footage straight... So it takes uh, two SD cards. Okay. And one massive battery. That's the on switch. That's the battery thing. It takes... Once I can get the thing out, it's quite cold here. A battery that's about one and a half times the size of a regular oh, well, GoPro battery. God, the majority of that thing is... I suppose it needs to be a big battery because it's running two cameras and doing a... <laughs> Possibly yeah. doing a load of stabilisation in it. Uh, I think the stabilisation is done in post. Or, or at least recording extent. accelerometer data yeah. and other things. So there are two SD cards in there. It is essentially two GoPros back to back. Right. Um, I cannot fault the picture quality on this. I know someone in the comments on the first video said there's a, there's a weird artefact on one of the things. I don't understand why. And if you don't know it's a 360 camera doing stitching, you wouldn't. Obviously, the lenses are slightly offset. If you get too close, it's not going to be able to stitch perfectly because parallax. But other than that, the stitching is really, really good. The camera's great. It like it's it's a like a lot of GoPro stuff. The hardware is excellent. And when we talk about stitching with 360 degree cameras, they are made up of more than one camera, um, and you have to join together the the video that they're recording or the photos that they're recording. <laughs> with seamless lines. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them, it looked like an entire line going around a section of things. So if you're panning around a, a panable shot, uh, then you can see the line move in front of you. Um, 
and others. There might be a, just a black circle at the bottom where it's unable to capture it and stuff. Um, like the old GoPro mount used to have six GoPros in a row. And stitching that, I'm told, was a nightmare because you had to get six GoPros worth of footage, match up all the timelines, and then just give it over to a computer program that would take hours to work out the best way to blend. So I said one of the first selling points that interested me of that was um, it lets you export um, in a watchable format rather than bloody panny stuff. A second one that interested me in this is that the stitching, it does it itself. Um, uh, and yeah. in, in theory, in and theory. Um, it looks flawless. Yes, it does look pretty much flawless. Um, for, the, for the cockpit shot, we've got one camera pointing to bright, bright sunshine, one camera pointing at the, um, at the crew, and it's done the best job possible, which is obviously there's a line, but it's well, very well blended between the two. Uh, for the shot in the cabin, you basically can't see the join. It's great. However, as with a lot of GoPro stuff, the software that does this is... I can only describe it as a big bag of bollocks. <laughs> GoPro's Fusion Studio is dire. Okay. Um, first of all, like... I didn't realise that was out yet. I thought you had to wait till the no, beginning it's, of it's next out, year. No, it's out for desktop. It's okay. just not out for mobile. Right. Um, uh, you can either pull the footage straight off the camera or you can pull it off the uh, SD cards and just keep the folders intact. There, like, the stitch is great. But so it comes off what format? Is it equi-rectangular? Uh, no, it's, it's literally a raw thing. It looks... I'll, I'll put one of the footage, bits of yeah. footage up. It's a circular... Oh, it's two footage. circles next it's to each other. No, it's... Because two SD cards, remember? One SD card just has a circle... With oh, what's they're completely coming, separate? They're completely separate. And you have separate. to deal with it? Yeah, well, no. You, you plug the camera in and Fusion Studio does it. Oh, it imports it and deals with it as it's importing yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, or you pull the, the entire video files and folders off and... And put them in Premiere it. and do it a lot uh, No, and, and give it to Fusion Studio, okay. which... Like, Fusion Studio does load the footage correctly um, and then immediately give you a preview. It does that. Okay. Stitching, even though it's only stitching together two things, takes roughly, from on my laptop, which is a... I mean, Beefy. Half it's an, that thick. <laughs> half an hour per minute of footage. Sh yes. What? Yes. Now, that's normal for 360 stitching. It's a really difficult, complicated, yeah. mathematical job. No, actually, no. Good. Yeah. In fact... Yes, I can see why it took that long. Yes. It's a really good stitch. <laughs> yes. But if your intention is to do, like we were thinking, oh, and use this for citation needed and just sh shove it in the corner. No. Hours and hours. Days. Yeah. Literal days. It's not set up for that. Also, you know how um, GoPro every, I think it's four gigs, starts a new file? Mm. For some reason, before, uh, even if you're only stitching out 10 seconds from one of those files, it will need to combine all those into one MP4 file first. So if you've got, as I had, 35 gigs of footage and another 35 on the other SD card, so that's 60 gigs already, before it can even start stitching a 10 second clip, it has to create two whole new 60 gig, or I say 36, it has to create two whole new 36 gig MP4 files, one for each side. And it doesn't save them, it doesn't even reuse them. They just sit in your hard disk, never to be used again, and when you click to stitch a different bit, it recreates them. So that's another 20 minutes for each file you want to pull Can out. Can you chop out the bit that you want it to stitch before you stitch it, or does it want to stitch the entire bloody thing? It want, it, no, it will, it will combine into a file and then it will just stitch that bit, which, again, makes no sense. So if you've recorded for two hours, for example, say on a long flight, yep. and let's say you've had five minutes of, I don't know, zero G, yep. and you just want to stitch that zero G bit and it chop all the It will still need to merge the entire two-hour file into a two... It, the okay. entire sections of files into a two-hour file before it will let okay. you do anything about that, and it will need to do that before every stitch. I assume that will get fixed in a software update. It hasn't been yet. And while I'm at it, <laughs> if you would like to pull a 1080 shot out of one of these lenses, yeah. it still needs to stitch. <laughs> do, you want to, do you want to just pull out that section there, completely irrelevant to anything even near the stitch boundary? Still going to have to stitch that footage <laughs> for you, mate. Still, still going to have to. <laughs> and the file size, while I'm at it, I mean, justifiably is big. It's outputting GoPro Cineform files, which are enormous. They're not lossless, but they're basically ProRes equivalent. Yeah. So now you've got the 60 gig of original footage and the 60 gig it's had to merge and the 20 gig new file and... Yeah, okay. Um, but the result is beautiful. Okay. And the plugins in Premiere mostly work well. So it so comes I, with its own plugins in Premiere. So you Premiere and After Effects. So you I, don't have to use the native tools and struggle. I was literally able to take the parabola data from the telemetry on the plane. 
yeah. plug it into an expression in After Effects, and that's how it's stabilised. It's taking the raw telemetry data from the plane and just telling the plugins, yep, yeah, that's where to point now. Okay. That's great. Unfortunately, it also doesn't allow you to do parallel uh, encoding of frames. So if you've got that option turned on in your export where um, it says, you know, I run, you know, I've got a really powerful laptop. Uh, is it, uh, render, <coughs> five, uh, render five frames simultaneously. No, nah, I can't do that. Half of them will be black now. Because huh. it's already dealing with one. It's just going to reject them instead. It feels, this whole thing feels like beta software and hardware. Beta hardware because one of them just didn't work and beta software because it's incomplete and uncertain. So I cannot recommend that anyone buy this yet. Now this has only just come out within the last month. I just started that recording by pushing the button. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there yeah. you go. It's in, it's in 360. <laughs> <laughs> you can see what we can see in the front. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and actually it's stitching directly into the sun there, so we'll see how that works. Uh, and the, this pan Tom is currently doing of the, of the park. Yeah. Um, look, his hand is still still. He's not having to move the camera. So that's, that's one of the advantages of it. You, yeah. you set and forget, and then you can do your camera moves later. If you need that specific thing, as I did, and if you are particularly able to do it as a series of short shots, yeah. so the stitching is easy, then, I, then yes, you know, test it beforehand, make sure you've got a working one. For that specific thing, great. But everyone else, this feels like Go... You know, remember the very first GoPro that came out? Yeah. We're both getting really cold and <laughs> sniffly, aren't we? Sorry. Um, the very first GoPro, yeah, the one that had film in it and you had to manually wind it to advance it. I googled this the other day. They made a film camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is not the version I mean. <laughs> the, <laughs> the first good GoPro was the GoPro 3. Yeah. This feels like the first GoPro. There is a... There is... It's rolling again. Um, there is absolute genius in here, but it's not ready yet. And it has just come out in within the last few weeks. Yes. You are one of the first people to buy one it's yes. the, the hardware's existed for a while because i've seen other uh gopro partners let's call them yes. use them in their videos over the summer but on gopro's website they admitted that the, the app isn't available yet and won't be until the first quarter of 2018 so it, it already shows that they're behind schedule <laughs> with yep. their software and i wouldn't be surprised if that was the case if they've just out a, uh, a fusion software just so then you can do something. The stitching works perfectly. The rest of it, yeah. it's nearly there. It's nearly there. Version two will be excellent. Yeah. Version three will be perfect, as with a lot of things, as with the iPhone, as with GoPros. Everything technology. <laughs> well, everything, everything. Yeah. You can, you iterate. If you need it for, for a very specific use, it is I think the best 360 camera on the market, having seen a couple of other people who took theirs up on the I've on played the with a Ricoh Theta. Yeah. It is easy to use, but the footage doesn't look anywhere near as good. Yeah. It, if you don't need it, don't get it yet. If you don't need it, don't get it. You know where I'm going with that. <laughs> it's a thing. It's quite nice. It's not ready yet. If you know you need it, you know you need it, you've already ordered one. That's it. Yeah, the, that's sun is, the sun is setting on our review and this park closes in 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, I think last my time voice we did is, My voice is given up because it's really cold and I'm all... Uh, I'm all I late. think last time we did something on this bench, it was probably last year we did yeah. it just as the park was closing. Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> man, someone's going to get a GoPro Fusion as a Christmas present. <laughs> we just like, oh, spoiled man, it. We ruined it. Shh. <laughs> Oh, I like how you minced that. I know. That was good. I know. That was good. <laughs> I thought I'd save you one edit. <laughs>